Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Aloha and bienvenidos to Hispanic Hawaii. I'm Richard Concepcion, hosting with Ana Jimenez Matmeller. Today's program is about video production. Many of you see many different videos in YouTube and in many different websites. Some of these videos might have a negative or a positive influence on the viewers. Today's guest is Leo Hira. He's a video and web series creator, educator, and he's made over 480 YouTube videos. Help us, Leo, understand video production. Well, uh, first of all, uh, thank you so much, uh, Richard and Anna, uh, for inviting me to this program. And I have to say to you, and show the first uh, slide, the screenshot, please. Anna and I go back a long way. Uh, Anna was kind enough to uh, provide me uh, with her acting skills uh, in one of our series, and Richard and I go back in terms of our production with a group that's actually coming here this coming weekend as Voz of Voz. Uh, that is true. And we go back to that. Okay, you can switch out of that, please. And I'm happy to talk about this because, I mean, this is basically uh, what I've been doing for about 10 years now. Uh, and it's been a very exciting time. Exciting because first you have to learn uh, video production. And then you have to learn the fact that if you want to do videos by your own, you got to start at the very beginning, which starts at the conceptual uh, step, all the way through the uh, final master. And let me tell you, that's a lot of work. That is true, Leo. I can tell you from, from my point of view. But I wanted to know a little bit more about yourself. Tell me about yourself and what motivates you to start a new video production. Okay. <laughs> Good one, right? <laughs> um, well, it's one of those things. Uh, you uh, go into retirement uh, and you try to figure out what to do with yourself. And believe it or not, things come up. And video production was one of those things that came up and it uh, soon became an obsession. And I've been doing it for about 10 years now. Um, I've been doing every, every, every one of my videos basically is mine from start to finish. Uh, I've had help from uh, very capable people in that regard, and I've been extremely fortunate uh, to work with some very talented actors and actresses. Thank you, Leo. For uh, that I hope to be able to continue that type of work. So that basically, uh, what, what occurred was uh, that I was I was president of a mediation group here, and uh, I wanted to do something that would start bringing that to the screen. So I approached um, another uh, public. Um, uh, access uh, organization to help me in doing that. And so they came, uh, a camera was set up, the, the, uh, the video was shot, and then I said, okay, now what happens? And I was handed the tape and said, here it is, it's all yours. Make it happen. Make it happen, okay? <laughs> so okay. that's how I got started, okay? And from that, uh, I started to grow into it and really enjoyed the work, uh, and, and that's where it took off. Most of your videos are so diversified. We talk about uh, information, education, and sometimes uh, different issues within the community. Uh, tell me more about those videos. Well, I mean, it, it shouldn't be hard to understand. This island is very diverse to start <laughs> off with. And so why wouldn't my productions be diversified, right? And uh, frankly, if you want to learn how to do video, from my perspective, you do have to take a look at various aspects of what's going on in the community, as well as what's going on in entertainment, what's going on in nature, because you want to be able to understand and get a perspective on all that. Different types of shooting, different types of preparation. Uh, if you're doing uh, working with actors, you've got to write a script. Uh, if you're going out into nature, you've got to take into account, you've got to go outside and the audio becomes a problem, the lighting becomes a problem. Uh, in the studio, it's a totally di a different type of uh, environment. So for me, it was a way to make sure that I, I understood what it is to produce videos. That's awesome, um, Leo, and thank you again for the plug. I didn't expect you to put my picture up because he's had a lot of great actresses uh, that have worked on your videos. So Leo, um, one of your areas is leadership. 
And an example is the Admiral Hyman Rickover uh, video, which you co-produced and wrote with uh, Herman Stern, who's an awesome actor, uh, hands down. Can you tell us the inspiration behind this subject? Well, uh, Admiral Rickover and I share a uh, common foundation. We were both in the Navy. However, obviously, his career was a little more distinguished than mine. Uh, and it just turns out that I had this fascination uh, with uh, Rick Over because I had heard so many stories when I was going to school about uh, him and his leadership style. So that kind of piqued my interest, and then once I got going, um, I couldn't stop. And uh, then when I, uh, and Herman and I go back a long way as well uh, in, in our mutual collaborations. Um, for me, perfect guy. Um, we just went over to the submarine museum. Uh, we put together some shots about him walking through uh, the museum. It's an excellent place. If you haven't visited, it's a place to go. Uh, and then we wrote a script to uh, overlay that and do a voiceover uh, for the script. And as it turns out, they hit a, a lot of uh, a lot of good chords. I mean, the viewership keeps growing on that. I've got actually three versions. One is a very short version, one is without music, and one is with music. The one with music seems to be the most popular, uh, but it's about a man who just was an extraordinary person. I mean, some of the things you hear about Rick Over, um, he would interview, and what he would do, he interviewed everybody, first of all, for a nuclear power um, a duty. Uh, the things he would do, one is he cut the front legs of the chair about two inches shorter than the back uh, end. So when you sat down, you were constantly fighting the fact that you're going to fall over. Uh, and then he would also do things like ask you, do something that's going to get me really irritated. Uh, and one person broke one of his models, and that got him irritated. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> so I think that was the guy who spent uh, about six hours in the closet, because what happened is he would put people in the closet. Uh, and then let them out at a certain point in time. This particular individual, they forgot about him. Wow. So it wasn't until the next day that they opened the closet and there was the poor guy still sitting in the closet. So with a guy like that, you say, what does he have to offer? Well, what he had to offer is he probably uh, ran the best and most complicated project in our history in terms of development of nuclear power submarines and the reactors for those submarines. And so from that, he actually, he actually went and grew the nuclear force with all the submarines up to the time he was forced to retire, as well as the surface ships. So for me, uh, it was inspiring uh, to, to learn about them and to produce them and to work with Herman on this. Great. Wow, that's pretty fascinating. That's a very different leadership style, right? Yeah, that's pretty fascinating. And if you relate to that, that's great. <laughs> I did an interview for him, so oh. I can speak that. You know, some of the comments I get by people who were interviewed, I can't repeat on that. I like how you mentioned about different variations, because uh, that seems to be your mantra when you make videos. Uh, there was uh, another video I had done with you, and we did different variations. But So speaking of that, Frosters, Fraudsters is one of those videos where there's many different variations out there if you folks do watch that one. But so your playlist deals with fraudsters, scams, and elder care, and you have several, um, again, in the, these areas. Um, so when you created Froster the web series with local actors, what was the background um, uh, regarding all that? Simple. It's the phone calls I get. The robocalls and the uh, get scams, myself. Yeah. right? I mean, <laughs> come on. I mean, we all are subject to that. We get that all the time. That's true. Uh, I've yeah. gone to the FCC. I've gone to, uh, you know, various uh, firms and said, what can we do to stop this? It just keeps on going, okay? It's it not. keeps on growing. And it is really annoying. And then when you think about elders in the context of they're living by themselves, they're lonely, they get this phone call from this beautiful sounding person who basically lures them into further uh, dialogue, sending money using these cards you can buy at the CVS, uh, getting scammed. We all know about many of the scams that generate out of, uh, out of Nigeria, phone calls that come in uh, that basically lure you to the site, and then they charge you an ex exorbitant amount of money for each minute you're online. That really got me angry, okay, And in terms of what can we do about that. So, you know, as, you know, the purpose of what I do is to inform, educate, and promote uh, different uh, aspects of living our lives. 
for me, it was a natural to go into that. So Froster was a, an attempt to create a, a series dealing with somebody, Herman Stern again, <laughs> who was very prone to being scammed, okay? And so, you know, we, we did a couple of, uh, a couple of versions of that uh, in, in the context. It's still up on, the, uh, on our playlist uh, in regards to that. And then I also got in contact uh, with the Hawaii Partnership Against Fraud, uh, and they were very helpful, and I did several uh, video interviews of key pe people in that partnership that talk about investment uh, fraud, elder fraud, and then I worked with the uh, Hawaii Mediation Center uh, to actually look at elder care called kupuna pono, which is a way for families to resolve uh, their difficulties. Uh, so it grew from scams and fraud into elder care and will continue to grow you know, in terms of what uh, we're going to be doing. It's just a matter of time and availability of time to be able to get to that. Uh, and uh, you know, just, we're just going to grow that, that aspect of what we do. That is very difficult. We have to continue protecting uh, the community. But you also have a video that talk about conflict resolution as an art. Can you explain to me about <laughs> how do you see a conflict resolution as an art? Okay. <laughs> uh, to be perfectly honest, I mean, that is an exposition of two things, okay? Yeah. The exposition is some beautiful flower arrangements, okay. okay? With me superimposed, hopefully people pay more attention to the flowers than to that me. to you, okay. okay? But it deals with a very important subject, and that is uh, mediation. And mediation, to a degree, is an art. It's an art because of the fact that you have to deal with people uh, who are in conflict, and you have to work with them to try to resolve it in a peaceful manner. It isn't a, co a court proceeding. Uh, it isn't, uh, you know, a, a uh, adversarial type of environment because the mediator is trying to bring that collaboration uh, into that. So what I tried to do is leverage off of both the beauty of the arrangement of the flowers and the art that's associated with that uh, with the dialogue in, in regards to what mediation is. So that's basically how I came up with that particular video. That is great. I, I want to ask you a reference about the negative and the positive influence the video has on the viewers. I see that most of your viewers' uh, video had to do with education or promoting something, something that's happened with the community. What is uh, your opinion when somebody create a video and is create a negative influence on the viewers? I, I guess it's relative as to what you mean by negative, right? <laughs> I mean, all you have to do is there's some videos on there that you don't want to, you know, uh, watch. Okay, okay unless, correct. Unless then, you view what's being shown as positive. Right? Yeah, but that's true. But you have the freedom of speech too that that Absolutely. people can uh, put in, in YouTube whatever they feel that that is right for their point of view. Yeah, community standards. Okay, in terms of what goes on um, these uh, video channels, whether it's YouTube or Vimeo or others. They could use some work, okay? But I remember back in law school that I learned that the internet, uh, the, particularly the videos on the internet, what area do you think that got off on a quickest start at the initial stages of the internet? No, for sure. I don't want to venture a guess, Leo. Why don't we <laughs> I'll, I'll let tell you, you go for it's it? It's porn. I was okay? almost going to say it's it. porn, okay? <laughs> that's, what, that's what people turn to in the initial stages are you kidding me? I mean, today it's even worse and, and more prolific than anything else. So when you talk about negative influence, I mean, you talk about the fact that uh, you can get people addicted to that kind of, um, you know, material. And if, if you're not controlling the age at which your children can go and just freely use the uh, Internet, hey, you know, all bets are off as to what they're watching. So from my perspective, there's so many issues that need to be addressed, particularly to young people, uh, that need to have a, a positive uh, spirit behind them and have a community standard we can all live with is really, really critical, all right? So that's why one of the areas that I'm really honing in on is leadership uh, geared towards the young, the Hyman Rickover being one of those, uh, Paul the Apostle being the other, uh, and we'll talk a little bit later about my uh, current productions, two more, okay, people that I'm looking at. And the other one is education, okay? Uh, and again, education is so important, 
And one thing that to keep in mind, I just saw a program the other night where someone was speaking here about giving children the ability to be, uh, have their own initiative and their own creativity. And what that gentleman cited is a UH professor who's been there for 50 years, were incredible, um, you know, productive, innovative things that children one to eighth grade did that it just boggles my mind. And so recently, in the last half a year, I've been working with our parochial school uh, in terms of just capturing what they do. And let me tell you, it's inspirational, all right, as to, as to what those children can do if you have the right um, environment in which to give them that opportunity, you have the right staff, and you choose the right topics by which to do that, not just in the creative arts, okay, in terms of uh, entertainment like Mabel Stable or uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, May Day, uh, but also things like Showcase, where you give the children an opportunity to basically use a template and come up with their own businesses. And the results are just amazing. I mean, I spent a lot of time on them, but I enjoyed every second of that to, to put those videos together. So for me, when it comes to providing a positive light, there are opportunities there, that we really need to do that. That is true. And also, you two um, have the capability that you can view something if you think it is, you know, it's, it's not appropriate for the viewers. They can complain and they can review it and to see if they can take it out from the, the website. Well, we are going to take a quick break, and uh, we're going to return, continue more story about Leo production. Hello, and welcome to Out of the Comfort Zone. I am your villainous host, R.B. Kelly. Today we are playing two truths and a lie, and I will tell you two truths, and you will tell me which one is the lie. Truth number one, this is a real mustache. Truth number two, I want you to watch my show on Tuesdays at 1 p.m. So tune in and let me know which is the truth and which is the lie. I'm R.B. Kelly with Out of the Comfort Zone and show up next Tuesday to see my mustache live. Hey, Stan the Energy Man here on Think Tech Hawaii. And they won't let me do political commentary, so I'm stuck doing energy stuff. But I really like energy stuff, so I'm going to keep on doing it. So join me every Friday on Stan the Energy Man at lunchtime, at noon, on my lunch hour. We're going to talk about everything energy, especially if it begins with the word hydrogen. We're gonna definitely be talking about it. We'll talk about how we can make Hawaii cleaner, how we can make the world a better place, just basically save the planet. Even Miss America can't even talk about stuff like that anymore. We got it nailed down here. So we'll see you on Friday at noon with Stan the Energy Man. Aloha. Uh, welcome back to Hispanic Hawaii. We are here with Leo Ura talking story about video production. So Leo, let's take a look at um, what you've produced so far. We want to look at some of your clips. Okay, yeah, if you put up that playlist, uh, it's, it's very difficult to see. But uh, what YouTube gives you the capability to do on your channel is basically come up with topic areas that you want to address and put them into playlists, which means that all those videos that are associated with that particular topic are grouped together. In some cases, they may overlap, okay, because if it's about entertainment, but it's also an event, you may have that particular video in two different playlists. But I just wanted to provide an opportunity here to say that, you know, over the years, uh, the, the number of playlists, we talked about diversity before, has just continued to grow. Uh, and so from that perspective, uh, I'm, I'm very happy that we have this opportunity through YouTube and Vimeo, okay, to be able to put this forward and if you do enough videos to group them, so you have two places you show them. One is in your channel, and the other one is basically on your uh, creative stu uh, studio aspect of it, where the individual videos are, are posted. So it's, you know, when, when you're looking at this, uh, how to do this, you have to think in those ways of how you're going to you know, put these together. And the nice thing about playlist is once you play one, the other ones in the playlist show up in a separate column, and you can actually play through uh, each of those uh, videos to completion. Uh, you know, if, if you care to do that, or choose one of the videos in that playlist, okay? Oh, wow. Great tools. Exactly. So, uh, one of the other areas that you did uh, filming on was Iconography with Father Damien Higgins. Uh, you produced that. So, what's, this is an um, a art topic. How did this come to fruition, a religion art topic? 
Yeah, okay. If you, if, let me start with the video, okay, uh, the icon yeah. video, just to give you an idea of what, uh, what this is about. Okay. Mm -hmm. I led a full life, served my country, accomplished my objectives, and drove people to success through assumption of responsibilities, accepting accountability, and meeting objectives. Isn't that what is needed today? Herman Stern, I'm sorry for some reason uh, we didn't rightfully flag the video I wanted to show. So let me talk about this because I'm just one of the awesome people that I've dealt with over the years is this, uh, is this priest. He's uh, from the same Catholic right as I am, and he was here in Hawaii for a while. Uh, and we got to know him, and now he has actually gone from uh, being a, a, a priest to being the abbot of a monastery up in uh, Northern California. Okay. And his avocation uh, includes iconography. So what the video tried to do was to give you a bit of a hint about uh, what iconography is about. It is a way for development of prayer, uh, to get into a prayerful state. Uh, state. And what it is uh, is you copy ancient images, you basically copy them, all right? And you uh, adorn them uh, appropriately following the template. So there's, there's no creativity per se in that regard, but during that period of time, there's a retreat aspect of it that's going on, a prayerful uh, aspect that's going on, that's leading you to create what is a window, all right, into spirituality. So. I got caught up in this. Uh, it's part of, you know, my faith. Uh, my wife loves to do it, and I forgot to bring an icon. <laughs> okay, no problem. <laughs> That's good. We can you. talk about it. Right? Okay, uh, but uh, Father Damien Higgins is just one of those people who has uh, so much charisma. It's it just leaps out of him. Uh, so there's two reasons that uh, I'm so enthusiastic about it. One is the iconography itself, and second is this charismatic individual who just inspires me all right, in terms of our discussions. He's got a great sense of humor as well. Uh, he runs a really tight monastery uh, in Northern. We visited up there, uh, and so from those perspectives, that's what iconography means to me. Perfect. Okay. So can you give us, uh, share some tips for the future of video producers and their productions and writings? Well, uh, of those? I, uh, I interviewed a, uh, a, 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 video, a documentarian videographer some years ago, a guy named Yuri Luhove, uh, who c comes from Canada, and he was here because he'd won an award for a uh, program that he produced on the Holodomor which is basically um, uh, a genocide that occurred between 1930 and 1933 uh, for, the industri for the purposes in Ukraine, for the purposes of providing grains and food so that the Soviet Union could industrialize. Oh, wow. Okay? So I, I, I spoke with him. He goes back to the days of uh, before the DVDs, before the tape, to the actual camp. To the <laughs> okay, uh, okay that's worked, a long time. He worked with people like Henry Ford, uh, Henry, uh, yeah, Henry Ford, right? Not Henry Ford, um, what's the actor's name? Um, Henry Fonda? Henry Fonda. Oh, no. oh, <laughs> you're showing right. your age. You're showing your age. Okay. <laughs> I always get that mistake. But, you know. Jane he, Fonda. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, what, 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 the one thing he told me, you know, in terms of tips, he said, if you want to go into this business, grab your camera as a youngster and go talk to your grandparents and capture what their history is about. And you have no more fascinating subject than to do that and then grow it from there, all right? And then the second aspect of it is, I mean, in some cases, people want to be just the person who produces, others want to do set design, uh, editing, things like that, audio and stuff like that. That's not the road I've taken, okay? I've taken uh, the road of A to Z. Do everything, all right? <laughs> Basically, a lot of work. Yeah, okay. Uh, that's why I only have uh, 480 uh, videos in 10 years. But uh, in any case, you know, for, for me, that's really important. And then as you go along, if you pick out a particular area, 
then you really got to learn it. And the way to learn it is to actually go out and, and doing it. Although there's lots of good resources here. We have Olelo, which you know, sponsors a, uh, a program for doing that. Uh, and then, uh, of course, you got the Hawaii Film Collaborative. Hello. Yeah. Okay. And there are other sources by which you got the uh, you got the uh, Creative uh, Media Center, uh, either at UH or Shamanad, I forget where they're at. You can go and take those courses, and you got a lot of stuff on YouTube too. So you know you can you can and probably other sources, but watch those and watch lots of videos in the area that you're interested in, so that you can get a feel for. Uh, what it takes to make a video in a particular area that you are interested in. And then I wouldn't go and invest in a $20,000 camera, okay? Uh, you know, you, you take something that's modest, or you start with your smartphone, or you start with a GoPro or something like that, and you, and you build up to make sure you like it, you can do it, and you're gonna get the results you want. Because if you're looking to make money off of this area, uh, not likely, okay? A lot of competition. Uh, a lot of co yeah. tremendous competition. That, okay, that, so that is true. So we, we got about a minute left sure. before we, we finish with the show. Can you tell me the best and the part, the best and the worst part of creating production, real quick? Well, the best part of uh, creating it is working uh, from start to finish, and especially when you're working with actors or actresses, right? Uh, it's uh, it, it's just so much good. It's really great. I think that the hard part to take is uh, if you go to the public with what you produce. Gotta have a hard skin, all right. You gotta have a hard skin because you're gonna get critiqued, all right. And you, if you can't take it, then don't do it. Don't make it public. Okay? Just do the That's best you advice. can, right? Exactly. So, what are your future plans? Oh, my future plans. Yeah, because you can put up the uh, the, the uh, current production uh, slide if we have that. Warrior begins. Okay. Yeah, we, I got two in production. They're actually almost two years uh, that I've been working on this. Uh, they're both leadership principles. They're, what they're about is role models, okay? Using role models. Forget the theory, forget all that stuff. Find a role model. And I, and I use two role models to make these productions, elucidating their leadership principles. One is Chesty Puller, who's the most legendary Marine uh, highest award. And the other one is Amelia Earhart. And I chose Amelia simply because the interest is, where did she die? And, <laughs> oh, we're, we're still trying to find out, right? Yeah, yeah okay. we're still trying. Yeah. It's a lot of investigation. You're in Bigfoot. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm saying, wait a minute, we forgot about the person, okay? I mean, she did some really great things. She's an inspirational model. In leadership in her field, Chesty is leadership in the field, being the battlefield, okay? So that's what I'm doing. All right, Leo, I want to say thank you so much for coming to Hispanic Hawaii. Um, we are running out of time. And we want to say thank you for all the viewers watching Hispanic Hawaii. And don't forget, you can rewatch this program at thinktechhawaii.com and many other programs. Gracias y hasta luego.